think he can. He did the. He did that. No bueno. Son. I'm going to skip him and go back. Okay. Um, Mr. Lohr? Here. Miss Whitney? Here. All right. Reading of statement, statement of adequate notice, please. I'm going to mark him present. Everybody okay with that? I'm okay with that. I mean, he's here. Not a problem. Okay, notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on January 30th, 2020. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on July 1st, 2020. And filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on July 1st, 2020. Thank you. I need an uh, a motion uh, and a second to approve the minutes of June 10th, 2020 regular meeting and executive session meeting. Marissa, motion. Rose, second. Questions or comments? Yuri Dharma has a comment. I asked for the minutes to be amended because I find it very uh, uneven that sometimes we have a lot of our back and forth included in the minutes and sometimes we have hardly any. And I think there was an important back and forth that happened in the last meeting that was not included. I did submit that to be included and um, I was told that uh, that did not have to be accepted, which I understand. So I just want to give my reason for why I'm voting no to approve those minutes. Not a problem. Anyone else for comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no, I'm opposed. Motion carries. All right, I need a motion and a second to accept the secretary and treasurer's Are you report. Able to vote for that? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me again, Vicki. I'm sorry, did Harry vote? Harry, can you hear us? I don't think he can hear us yet. I'm going to put him as an abstention. Okay. That's not a problem. All right, I need a motion and a second to accept the reports of the Secretary and Treasurer for May 2020, which are in agreement. Stephen, uh, make, uh, make a motion. Cameron, second. Questions or comments? Comments from Vera Darmo. Um, our packet was 65 pages. I printed out every page and tried to go through it. I still don't feel confident voting on 65 pages of information. Um, I have a couple questions about the packet. Should I give my questions now or wait till we do the finance committee report? Well, <sighs> What are your questions, Vera? Well, um, I mean, I went through everything. I'm trying to learn. I don't feel, I don't like that I have to vote no on financial issues. I have to learn about them. I'm looking at the change in the emergency reserve account. The subtotal for the emergency reserve account, it says actual $9,305,000 uh, approximately. And um, does that, is the emergency reserve account for unexpected um, emergencies, say like the boiler blowing or, or something like that. Is that what that's for, the emergency reserve account? I don't believe that's for emergency reserve. Uh, Vicki, can you shed a little bit more light on that? I don't really know where she's looking and I could not this question before the meeting. It, it would give me time to actually know what she... Well, it's, I mean, um, it's, it's very difficult to do this board packet because not every page is numbered. This one just says page three of eight. Um, it could be attachment G, I'm not sure. I mean, I, look, I have it all spread out. I was looking at every single page, but it is the page having to do with um, recapitulation of budgeted fund balance. Gen uh, it's at the top, it says general mm -hmm. fund. So could you explain to me what is the emergency reserve account for? Just some basic information. I, I can go over this with you, but I don't think that we should do this right now. I agree 100%. Vera, if you're more comfortable voting no on this, you can vote no on this. And at a later date, you can get together with Vicki and discuss it in person. Would okay, that be okay? Can I, can I just ask the very simple question, which is what is the emergency reserve account for? 
just a very simple question. What is that basically? Probably surplus, but I don't know. I don't know. I have to look into that further to answer your question. Well, um, Phil, what is that for? It, I really couldn't tell you what now, what it could be for. It could be for anything for, you know, that comes up that's an emergency. I don't know. There's a lot of different line items on everything, Vera. And without actually sitting down and looking at the budget, it's very hard to tell you exactly which one it is. That's why I suggest. If like you, anything equipment related, right? Just like if there's an equipment problem. Equipment would come out of another fund. Building equipment stuff would come out of, you know, a capital reserve fund like we have for the uh, boiler. Oh, there's, okay. a lot of, there's a lot of different, you know, uh, spots for money for different things and everything according to the way it's set up accounting wise has to be spelled out. Oh, I got you. And also I, I would think we have insurance on some of our equipment. Like if the boiler went, do we have insurance for that? Well, we don't have insurance on the boiler. The boiler in the one school is probably over 25. Well, the, in Walnut Street School, it's extremely old, but the two we have in Pearson, you know, they're getting to the point where if we have a failure with the boiler, nobody will provide insurance for like for something like that. But we don't have any insurance on those boilers. That's not like a regular thing. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll have to, um, Vicki, at some point, we'll have to get together. <laughs> Yeah, what we're planning on doing, Vera, is probably next month, if we do go with a regular meeting, we'll have a pre-meeting where a lot of these questions can be asked instead of tying up everybody in the regular meeting with these questions. Okay, okay, All very right. good. Um, not a problem. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Oh, one more. Sorry. This is not a detailed thing. Um, I was on beverlycityschool.org. And their board packets, their expenditures are all online for the public. So are the board packets outside of confidential things that are labeled confidential? Are the expenditures listed in the board packet public information that could be put online? That's a real good question. I don't know how to answer that. You I know? mean, Beverly has it all on there. I, every, anybody can go to beverlycityschool.org. <laughs> And when they have meetings, yeah. their, their list of expenditures, it's all on there. Now, of course, that doesn't include confidential things. I'm not talking about that. Well, so that's my recommendation that we also yeah. put that online. Well, that's one of the other things we can talk about at a later date also, okay? Okay, very good. It is, it is allowable. It is allowable. In fact, uh, there are districts that include their packet without the confidential information. So. Ms. Darmo, you are correct. That, that Can we vote on that to have that online? Can we vote on that right now? No, that's, that's not what we're here to discuss well, right now. Business. That would go under new business and also one of the committee to discuss it also. Okay, so leave it till the end of the meeting. Yes. Or exactly okay, very good. We can discuss. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed, I am Vera Darmo. All right, motion carries. All right, thank you all. Uh, community liaison report. Do we have anyone here? Oh, yes. Can Harry hear us yet? I do not believe so. Well, it appears to be frozen. Yeah. Oh, I told, <laughs> I told him to look at his email so that he could call, learn how to call in. So I'm not sure if he, uh, it's, it's so hard to tell if he did that or not. I, I have to put him down as he is abstained, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I can't. I'll text them. Okay. I'll put him. Him that he's not really here. I don't know. Well, I'm not asking. If extension is fair, or he would be counted as absent up until this point, or until he's actually able to participate. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Moving on. Do we have anyone from Delanco PTO here? I looked at participants. I didn't see anybody. Um, do, 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 do. I'm looking for hands up there at any spot camera. Do you see hands up? No. Okay. How about DISA Recreation or Township Committee? There are some Township Committee members present. If they would like to say anything. Miss Holland is present. Okay. Doesn't look like anyone has okay. anything to say. Oh, um, so I think, uh, if I may, it's Vince. Yes. Sir. Uh, I think soccer, soccer is probably the only thing that's going to try to go on, and I think uh, sign uh, sign ups are going to end soon. So if anyone's still interested, um, I think they're still taking people in for all these levels. 
Okay, great, Vince. Okay, uh, moving on. Welcome, visitors. Glad to see you all here. This is the part where I do my little president's message. It's been quite an interesting couple months with COVID and everything else, and we've all had to make a tremendous amount of changes and readaptations and everything. Uh, if you recall that this has probably been one of our hardest financial years that we've had in a long time. We had to raise taxes 5.56 cents per hundred dollars of assessed value. Now, that was pretty well a bare bones budget. And if anybody's been coming to these meetings for a while, you've heard me get on my little rant about special ed and how it costs us a tremendous amount of money. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, people that have pro children that have the need special education, I'm all for seeing them get the best help they can. But in a small school district like Delanco, between special ed out of district costs and transportation costs, it's been putting a tremendous hurt on our district. Now they've got the new 64 units by the railroad tracks that got developed and it's no fault of anybody's that, you know, it's cost us, you know, $330,000, but we've had to make adjustments for it. We've made a tremendous amount of adjustments, but the state has just notified us and they did that on July 10th that they're cutting $115,000 more from our budget. Well, that $115,000, we've already cut quite a few things to the bone. How do we turn around and get that back? We're looking at, we had a meeting uh, Monday night, and we're looking at quite a few different options, you know, from the water, or not the water fountains, the water that we provide for the teachers to drink, you know, stipends, athletic stipends, because with with COVID, it doesn't look like we're going to have any athletics happening with the school districts. Um, your transportation, we can save $25,000 by looking at our lease purchase. Um, we had one student who did move out of district, which is going to save us $37,000, but that's no guarantee that we won't get another student. Uh, the online math curriculum, $3,800. Uh, bottled water, like I say, that was about 1000 you know, travel for out of district. We cut that, that was $7,000. We have been looking at everything. Now here's an extra wrench into the works. We make about $50,000 off of X care. With the coronavirus, is X care even going to be a viable option? If not, that's gonna put us about $165,000 in the hole. One of the hardest things to do is to cut things from your budget. We've already had some reductions in force, which is extremely difficult and it affects everyone. One of the things you'll see a little bit later on tonight's budget is a resignation of a teacher because we had to do a reduction in force. The state says, uh, says to us that we've got to have that particular teacher, you know, and it's, it's folks, it's getting very difficult out there to try to make ends meet. It's putting a little stranglehold hold on all these small districts year after year. What I encourage everyone to do is call your state senators, call your state assemblymen. You've got, you know, uh, everyone out there make noise because it's only going to get harder. We wanted to bring Chromebooks down to more students this year. That's not happening. You know, kids today use a computer for everything. I mean, you'll see a five, six-year-old, seven-year-old, they know their way around a computer better than mom and dad. We couldn't do that because we don't have the finances. I don't want to see it get to a position where we have to riff anyone, but it's getting very hard out there. So please, folks, if you have a chance to call your assemblymen, your state senators in the state, something has to be done with special education funding because the small schools are dying a slow death. Anyhow, that's enough of my rant right now tonight. I'll get moving on with everything else here. Uh, obviously, student recognition. We have nothing because we don't have any students now. I'm going to open this to public comment on agenda items. Okay, anybody put their hand up or anything to say there? Nothing in the chat yet. Give nothing them a second the to type. I'll give a second here. <laughs> I believe a member of the public asked where they could find a copy of the yearly budget breakdown for the school district. Joe or Vicky, I don't know if that's a question you're able to answer. Yeah, we have it on the website. Um, if you if you look under 
uh, budget resources on the website. Uh, the presentation for 2021 is on there. Uh, the workshop information is on there. The user friendly budget is on there. So I would, you know, if this is just general info for anybody. I would direct you to our website. I'm going to see them on resources, and there are a few files there. Courtesy of. All right, I'll call you. Thank you, Vicky. Love you, be you, you keep following that. You don't have to follow oh, okay. what I'm actually doing. Um, I was camera sitting here working with the computer. Okay, obviously we have no other comment on, uh, from the public on agenda items. I'll turn it over to Mr. Mersinger for superintendent's report. Joe. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, a motion is requested to approve the following. Uh, superintendent's report submitted by me. Uh, principal's report submitted by Lou Conti. And then uh, fire and emergency drills for June 2020. We did not conduct drills. Uh, we conducted zero drills during the closure. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna be doing a training tomorrow related to school security drills uh, under the current circumstances. Uh, we have a pupil welfare report there, which you can read the numbers. Uh, and we're also, I'm also asking for approval of Therese Raffanello, who is our school nurse at Walnut to serve as the mentor for Alyssa De La Pena who is the uh, school nurse at Beverly uh, for the fall semester. And we also have a couple of uh, NJDOE required items. Uh, each year we annually adopt our evaluation model. Uh, so for teachers, it's Danielson. And uh, for principals, it's Marshall. That's been the case for a number of years. That's not anything new or different. Uh, so um, yes, a motion is requested for items A through F. Need a motion in a second, folks. Mar Marissa will make a motion. Spence, I'll second. Okay. Questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mersinger. Thank you. Instruction and program committee report. Mrs. Whitney. Uh, there's no report at this time. All right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Whitney. Finance Committee report, Mrs. Gonteski. Um, yes, I make a motion to approve items A through Q as listed on the agenda with just pointing out um, as a piggyback to your president's message, items F through L are all special education contracts with the amounts specified for various students. Um, to show what those costs really do, do, do to our district. A second. For a civil second. All right. Questions or comments? I have a comment. Yes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this, the tuition for these special education placements. Um, the contract was for the period of starting July 6th. Today is July 15th. So why wasn't this these items on last month's agenda? Because we didn't have the contracts then. So if they already started July 6th, it doesn't matter. The vote doesn't matter at this point. Typically, the contracts always go on after the students already been placed there. So we couldn't have voted on this in June, you're saying? We didn't. It would be not possible. We didn't, we didn't have contract that. OK, my other comment is 61,420 per student. That's for one, two, three, four students. Um, three of them need an aid, $35,700. My question is, these tuitions are much more expensive than the Burlington County Special Services District, which we also have some students going there. And that district services many different classifications. It was set up for the even the most severely handicapped. Why are these students not going there? Because they have IEPs and whatever it specifies in an IEP it might be something that Burlington County special school districts can't handle. That's why they're going to Kingsway or another school. You know, so is that is that the case that their IEPs? I we talk about the student specific in our meeting. Yeah, we. Um, I was going to say, Miss Darmo, I appreciate your question, but uh, 
it, it, I think we're entering the realm of talking about specific students and identifiable information once we say, okay. why is that student placed there? So uh, I, has I understand. Needs and I, can, I, cannot vote, I cannot vote to approve this unless I knew more like in an executive session, if we could talk about it so we could protect confidentiality. We can't so even talk in executive session about the students, Mrs. Darmo. This is something that we have no say on. This is something that they have, that's where they have to go to school. We can't discuss, we can't say, oh, we'd like to send them to this school or that school to save money. We don't have a say. Okay, so I just wanna be clear, because they're included here, it means their IEP only allows them to be sent to this school, that's, not the that's, other one. That's not what we stated. We stated that there are different needs for each student uh, for each family, uh, we have we have parents that we work with. We have other districts that we work with, and uh, we we place students in programs that are appropriate for them and their IEP. This is not to say that we wouldn't change placement for students as needed if if we felt that that was necessary. But the the child study team uh, does not necessarily say, well, the board doesn't like this placement, so now we're going to change the placement. That's not how. A child study team oper operates. Not to mention that sometimes at certain schools, like if you're going to use special services as an example, the program that they offer for what possibly this uh, this individual student may need might be full. So we have to find it elsewhere. These these tuition rates. This is unsustainable for our township. That's what I want to say about this. That's what I've been saying for the past. Agre three days. Agreed, Vera. Yeah, agreed. We've all been saying that. We've yeah. all been saying that, Vera. That's, that's, it's been out of, it's out there, of our there's hands. A lot, there's a lot of factors that go into this that are outside our control, which I'll just echo Phil's comment. Mm -hmm. This is why people have to call their state legislatures and say, you know, you need to tackle this issue because for small districts, I mean, Delanco is a middle-class community in most part. We're we're gonna get we're gonna get whacked even more. I, I I'm telling you, we're gonna get whacked even more with this. And and the option is is that we're gonna have to raise taxes every year to the maximum amount that we're allowed, and and we're gonna have to make substantial cuts because that's the only way we're gonna be able to stay afloat. I'm um, not I'm not confident. I mean, you're what you're basically saying is there's no way for me to oversee that our money is used in the most effective way possible because of all of these confidential um, IEPs. And I, I can't be involved in that. I don't know if we're getting the best bang for our buck. It's too bad for me. So I, I have to vote no on this. I don't believe it's our job to it's not oversee that. that. That is yeah. correct. It's not our job. Yeah, Vera, I'll, I'll just want to, I just want to state, um, this was a question that a lot of, including myself, a lot of new board members have when they get, when, when they see these tuition contracts, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's an eye shocker. Um, that really the, the state does not give the local boards control and, and we don't, we, we really are just this is really just a formality really is this vote so what's to um, keep this this learning center from going from 61,000 to 100,000 what's to keep them from doing that nothing no, miss Dorma, i think that's a much larger issue though, that affects every district in the state just like mr jenkins is saying that uh, special education funding is a big issue uh, special education costs in general are a big issue but no matter what uh, the IEPs are, are written as they are, and yes, changes in placement do occur, but that, that's not something that suddenly happens because a board member says, well, we are questioning the placement. It happens through a process that the child study team goes through. So um, I'm going to have to go I, and research this through my contacts before I can be comfortable voting yes or no. Otherwise, don't put it for me to vote on. If, you know, if you're saying there's legally no choice for me, don't put it for me to vote on. Otherwise, I'm vote. going to vote no for it. And you'll have to vote. You have to. You know, yeah, it has to go towards us and we have to approve it. Now, I really wish the state would pick up all special education costs. Nice. And then we have a fair amount of money to give to spend more money for more teachers, to spend more money on 
you know, Chromebooks to be able to give the kids the education that we all want them to have. But mm. unfortunately, the state isn't picking up the tab. And I'm sorry, I've, I'm a firm believer that the state should be taking care of more special education. Then we would have money to spend on our children in our schools. Okay, anyhow, moving on. I, I, sorry, I got on a little bit of rant there. Um, uh, you were on questions, questions or comments. comments. All those in hold favor? On, hold on. Okay, sorry, go ahead. I had one more comment. Vicki, just in case you didn't see, because Stephen was on mute when we did the uh, superintendent's report, he did vote yes because I saw him mouth yes. I'm on the, um, video now, Christian. I can't talk. Sorry about that. I got you, Stephen. I'm sorry, um, Cameron. Uh, on during when we voted for uh, Joe's superintendent report, uh, Stephen was muted for some reason. But when we did the vote, I did see him mouth yes over the video chat. So I just wanted to confirm that thank we got you. that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I got okay. you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? I'm going to have to do my thing where I, I do it by um, item. So whenever you're ready for that. One second. One okay. second, Vicky will be ready in a minute. Okay. Okay, ahead, so Karen. A and B, no. C through F, yes. G through J, no. K through K, L, yes. And um, hold on one second. M, N, no. O P um O P yes and Q no. I, I would like to repeat that. Okay. A B no. C through F is in Frank, yes. G through J no. K through L, yes. M through N, no. O through P, yes, and Q no. Um, that's correct. All right, and motion carries. Thank you, Rose. Uh, Operation Facilities Committee report. Mr. Caliguire. Uh, thank you, sir. Give me one moment to bring up my report, please. Not a problem. Okay, for the month of June for Operations and Facilities Committee, uh, routine maintenance activities. School is closed due to coronavirus, obviously. Low morning weed whacking for both schools. Uh, summer cleaning started at Pearson. Special project activities, grease to change all belts on rooftop exhaust fans at both, at both schools. And I saw them doing that, uh, they were busy there. Change exhaust fan motor and bearings in room nine at Pearson. Cleaning greased all unit vents at both schools. That's better. Uh, turned the coach shelves around in one kindergarten classroom and painted them. Replaced all broken and missing floor tiles that were under the shelf. Prepared gym floor at Walnut to get it ready to be finished. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Uh, policy committee report, Mr. Litwack. Uh, he doesn't have a policy report, so. I'm, I'm on the committee. Can I say something? Uh, you're on the policy committee? Yeah, it's a procedural thing. Who is the individual that sets the time for the meetings? Is that the board president or is that the committee head or who does that? Usually it's myself. Okay, so when is the date you're setting for that meeting? Because we have had no meetings on policy. We haven't had, uh, Mr. Mersinger and I discuss things on a regular basis and we haven't come up and obviously with COVID it's very hard to have Well, in the last sort of agenda, meetings. it said that the policy committee would meet in July. So could you give us a date? That's Ms. Darmo, that's the plan. Uh, however, when we talked about that in June, uh, we had not received the road back uh, on June 26th from the Department of Education when it comes to reopening the schools. So uh, basically 99% of our efforts, at least that, are going uh, toward reopening our schools. Now that doesn't mean policies are unimportant. And in fact, uh, we're going to need to put policies in place uh, for reopening schools that are different based on the guidance that we're receiving. But uh, no matter what, that, I mean, I would still like to have that meeting. It's just a question of when can we do it? Uh, and it is an excellent question. It's just, uh, we, we've been tied up with other tasks. Well, I think it's just Harry and me on the committee. So I can just give them a call on the phone tomorrow and discuss non-COVID 
policy just to get started? Are you just so what I would do is I, I have the Strauss estimate update. There are our policy management company that, that they've been working with us for many years. Uh, I share that with the policy committee and we discuss those updates. A lot of them are routine updates. Some of them are more extensive updates that, that um, are unexpected because of new laws, that type of thing. So you're not setting a date in other words? I'm not setting a date tonight simply because uh, I am preparing five separate meetings for reopening, including a meeting that took place tonight, as well as four more meetings over the coming weeks uh, that truly take precedent right now when it comes to reopening. Again, that doesn't mean policies are unimportant. It just means that certain, uh, certain topics that we would typically discuss are on the back burner because of that. I understand. I could always talk to them informally. Yes, you can. And you can talk to any board member informally. That's no problem. Okay, whatsoever. very good. All right. Just, just a point. Sorry, uh, sorry, Mr. Jordan, just a point of clarification, a minor point that was made. Um, I'm there. I'm also on the policy committee. But of who sets the meeting dates? Uh, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. Thought it was the the, the chairs of the of the subcommittees in coordination with you yes. so it's me it's not the president the, pre the president is a member of all committees and has the right yes. to attend those subcommittee meetings but it is the chair of the subcommittee meetings in coordination with the superintendent that sets the meetings yes and then phil and i discussed that as well because phil is typically involved in every committee meeting because of correct as, as president officio uh, yeah that's you know he's it's called he's called an ex officio committee member because even though he's not on the committee he's the president like you said he's entitled so phil and i talk about dates as well so yes it's it's really a combination of you know me discussing dates with the chair discussing dates with the president and the committee members and coming up with something that makes sense for everyone correct i just wanted i just wanted that because i i didn't want board members to be confused and think that we have to wait for the president to set a date for a meeting. You no, know, it's, it's, you know, usually if there's no topic to discuss, there's no meeting anyway. Um, and especially if the chair feels that there's no topic to discuss, yeah. there's no meeting. But I, I just wanted to make that point real quick. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Yep. Okay, moving on. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Lightwack, even though you can't hear us, Harry. Uh, personnel committee report, Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the following. A, Sandy Flemingstein to perform some work related to her responsibilities as the speech language pathologist at a rate of $55 per hour for up to 20 hours. B, the appointment of Linda Guckin as the virtual home instruction teacher for a grade six student, incoming grade seven student for the 2020-2021 school year at the DTEA rate of $55 per hour for 72 hours of instruction with a start date of July 1st, 2020. C, the resignation of Joy ja Jaskolka Fry, ESL teacher, effective 63020. D, the resignation of Katarina Galvich, Spanish teacher, effective 63020. And E, the non-teaching substitute list uh, on the board packet. And I will make the motion. I will second it. Marissa will second it. Sorry. Okay. Questions or comments? Comment, um, Vera Darmo. I want to say th so a big thank you to Katerina Galvich. My daughter's had her for Spanish. The, and I, I really appreciate all her years of teaching in Delanco. And best of luck to her. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I would uh, also like to thank Senora Galvich for uh, doing an excellent job of teaching me in the Delanco schools as well. I agree. She's phenomenal. Alexa was able to take, I think it was Spanish five and qualify for like, um, I think it was a special accommodation on her diploma for um, Spanish due to that. She's I'll, I'll also echo those sentiments. She's, she actually, I believe she started when I, was in middle school and she was she was really great so i wish sure do wish her the best i understand uh, here here as a superintendent i i agree 100 percent with everything being said about katarina galvich uh, she's a fantastic person an excellent teacher and uh my very first classroom that i ever visited in delanco was her classroom uh and it you know it was always a welcoming 
place uh, filled with energy. So, you know, I, it, Katerina will definitely be missed here as a teacher and, and we wish her the best uh, in her future. So true, and this is a roll call vote, please. Mr. Calgar. I vote yes. Ms. Darnell. Yes. Ms. Gonteski. Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Ms. Cameron Newton. Yes. Mr. Litwack. Not present. Mr. Moore. Yes. Ms. Whitney. Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you very much, Cameron. Uh, board liaison reports, Riverside, Mrs. Gonteski, do you have anything for us? Um, I just wanted to share um, with other members of the board and I know um, Mr. Mersinger sent out an email um, about being on the uh, reopening committee, but I just wanted to share that I am also on the reopening committee for Riverside. Uh, we had our first committee meeting on Monday um, a lot of information is going out in the back out and around and discussed um, and it's it's a work in progress um, so there and once we know more of what's going on it will certainly be shared right thank you very much Rose appreciate it uh, New Jersey School Board and Burlington County School Board Association Mr. Lightwack is in here or Harry can you hear us this time I don't believe he can. All right, thank you anyhow, Harry. Uh, Township Committee, obviously I haven't had a chance to make any meetings because I've had other meetings going on at the same time. I know the Township is working like crazy also. You know, they're in the same predicament we are. I'm hoping maybe come next month's meeting, we will be able to have it an actual in-person meeting, of course, with limits on people, but we shall see. All right, do we have anything for old business? Okay, nothing for old business. Uh, for new business, board self-evaluation is available. We have to do that soon. Um, also, depending on whether we go with a real meeting next month or a virtual meeting, we will have a pre-meeting at 6 p.m., which is gonna be very similar to what Rose does in Riverside and what I did in Riverside. And it's a good way of going over the agenda and things so we're not talking about things that could bore the public or have no bearing upon the actual meeting. So it's a good idea to get started with that. Um, does anything, anybody have anything else for new business? Um, yeah. I'll make it up. Vera Darmo, um, like I said at the beginning, I would like to have the non-confidential parts of the board packet online uh, like they do in Beverly. Can we agree on that? Well, we're not gonna agree on something right away. What we can do is we will talk about it. And we can talk about it in executive session, or we can talk about it in the pre-meeting. And then Mr. Mercier will be the one making the final decision on that. Yeah, and I think, I think um, Phil, you know, I would want the board to at least come to some kind of consensus because it is an allowable action. And as long as we're not including confidential information, uh, you know, I, I, I would actually not oppose it. However, the packet as it is today has plenty of confidential information. And that's why it, it certainly could not be released right now. Um, so we would basically need to say, what are we actually going to include in our board packet that can be released and what can't, you know, so it is a discussion process. It's not like you're saying, it, we can't just suddenly decide tonight. Anything uh, else for new business? Mr. President, under new business, I wanted to share uh, similar to what Mrs. Gunteski just shared that uh, we had our first meeting uh, of the reopening committee tonight. Uh, we spent about an hour and a half together talking about various topics. And uh, I had sent an email today just letting families know. I, I know that there are questions about what the plan looks like for 2021. Uh, however, the, the plan is still being developed. It is not yet finalized. And if I were to, to discuss details right now, I really think that it would create misinformation and confusion amongst many people. So our plan will be finalized over the coming weeks. And the, the target date to share with families is August 3rd, because that is in line with what the state recommends that we provide it four weeks ahead of time. 
Uh, I know some districts have moved much faster, you know, and I applaud them for that. However, uh, you know, I, I think that in this situation, the race is not necessarily to the swift. I think this is a slow and steady situation where, where you need to be looking at the landscape and understanding what's happening. And I certainly don't want to rush a plan into place that's not going to keep everyone safe and provide the best education we can. So it, it is a deliberate, slower process than what some other districts are doing and, and that's on purpose. So I, I appreciate the, the time to explain that because I know that there could be many questions or comments about that topic. Um, I see that Greta Gareth has to um, a chat comment. We have to be monitoring, okay. monitoring the chat. We're not there too. yet, Vera. No. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Anything else for I, new business? I, I just, I, I'm sorry. No, go for it, Stephen. No, I just wanted to real quick mention, um, just real, real quick, uh, the Delanco Recreation Commission, the Delanco Police Department, and uh, the Delanco School District um, will be partnering on, an, uh, for next year sometime, an educational program in regards to uh, water safety. Um, as everyone knows, on Father's Day weekend, um, there was a tragedy at the river. Um, a gentleman did, did drown. Um, so that a, a lot of township officials thought it was prudent that we, 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 we have to offer our kids something in regards to educating them about the dangers uh, that aren't necessarily visible to the eye about, you know, the waters that surround the line. I mean, we are a waterfront community. People are going to continue to enjoy, um, you know, the river and the creek and the other water areas, but we need to definitely alert them uh, to the danger. So uh, the Recreation Commission will be discussing it at the next meeting. Um, Joe, thank you very much for uh, getting back and uh, your willingness to, to partner with the commission and the police department. Um, and it's still, in, you know, we're still formulating exactly what this education uh, program will be, um, you know, because especially with COVID, it, it may not ju just be an assembly, um, but we'll definitely keep the board updated on this. I just wanted to mention that and uh, say thank you to Joe for, uh, for your willingness to partner uh, with the commission and the police department on this. Thank you, Mr. Laura. I appreciate it. Thank you, Stephen. This is Cameron. I just have a quick note for our meeting for August 19th. I won't be in. Like, apart from personnel and, and, and placements of students, like anything to do with uh, non, like anything to do with like just operating the schools, say boilers and paying for gas and this and that, that's not confidential. Not confident. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, we had another question from a guest. Will you be taking public comment on COVID planning? Um, I'm presuming that has to do with the opening of the school and there was a meeting previous to this. There's going to be the next meeting, which my son mentioned he wouldn't be able to attend. So I know. No, no, no. I said I wouldn't make the Board of Education oh, the meeting. the Board of Education meeting. Correct. Yes. So, you know, there is public that is already involved. Joe, I think you can explain a little bit better who's involved in that committee. We have, uh, we have 25 individuals involved in that committee, including uh, teachers, other staff members, administrators, parents, board members. Uh, so I think we really have a lot of different perspectives. Now that doesn't mean that individuals couldn't share questions or comments with me individually through email or, or something of that nature. But at this time, um, you know, we're receiving a lot of input. I mean, we, I explained to the committee that we have guidance from the Department of Education called the road back. I have reviewed that document twice. I've met with my colleagues about it numerous times over the past few weeks. Uh, we also have our board solicitor who provides information to us based on the legal interpretation of what we should be doing. We have Strauss SMA for policy management. They're helping us with that. Uh, we have the New Jersey Department of Health and the Burlington County Health Department that are providing guidance. So we are receiving a, a tremendous amount of guidance from many different areas uh, to develop the plan. In addition to the survey that was put out to families, as well as all the feedback that we're going to be getting from the committee. So yeah, I mean, I, I welcome comments about it. But but as I said, you know, I, I I'm not really able to answer questions and say, here's what we're doing for fill in the blank because uh, nothing is finalized. So uh, if, if, you know, if the president is willing to hear comments about that topic, I, I'm not opposed. It's just a matter of I can't really comment and I can't give any 
definitive answer to, to what we're doing at this stage. Not to mention, we might spend a month or longer going through everything and then the state might come through and change everything. So it, it's a work in progress, we'll have to see. Um, Greta, Garth, oh, yes. asked how do you- yeah. Yeah. For, for Greta, Mr. Jenkins, um, I actually met with Greta and, and a, a local group called Delanco Mutual Aid. I, I, did not want, I didn't want to neglect to mention this, although I have talked to the board about it as well. But for the, the sake of the public, I have met with that group virtually. Uh, it is a group that is uh, part of the Black Lives Matter movement and part of a, mo a greater movement to increase diversity, equity, and, and similar topics in, in schools and in the police force and various other areas of our society. So I applaud them for what they're doing and I've met with them. And so uh, what I can say to Greta right now uh, is that we can add the Delanco mutual aid to our distribution list so that you're aware of when board meetings are and, and things like that. that. That's a very easy thing. I, I added it to my notes just now. All right, she did say thank you. And uh, all right, uh, did, 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 hold on. Jennifer Deering in an email to the district on staffing changes, it stated Mersinger would be heading special education K through eight. What does that entail and what qualifications does he have to assume that role? I, I think that we, we discussed that topic at length last meeting and I, I would ask the board to, uh, to, um, to, to at, this, at this stage say, you know, we, we appreciate that question. Uh, however, I, you know, I, I, I would prefer not to continue going over that topic since it was discussed at length last month. I can understand that, you know, mercy or not a problem. So yes. I was unable to attend the last meeting due to scheduling conflicts. So I was not privy to that conversation. So I was just asking maybe for a recap of that topic. Uh, Mrs. Deering, I appreciate your question, but at the time of that meeting, I also stated then that uh, it, it is not, appropriate for the board to undergo questioning or for administrators to undergo questioning during the public comment section. And in my view, there are some questions that are very easy to answer because they are questions to clarify for the group of, you know, what's the website or whatever. But when it's a question of what are Mr. Mersinger's qualifications, uh, I really, I asked the board to put a stop to that last month. Uh, this is my seventh year in the district. I believe I am highly qualified for any administrative position out there. And that's, that's what I stated then as well. No, I'm understanding that. But so what does the role entail when it says heading up special education? Well, Mrs. Deering, I'm not going to engage in a debate or discussion about this topic. He is our super. Are the, are the board meetings, are the minutes from last board specifically in regards to those conversations available to the public? I they will be after tonight. We just voted on them at the beginning of the meeting. Right. So after the tonight, aren't you know, so you would be able to go oversee them then. All right, Jen? The yeah, but I'm saying, so you're saying that it was discussed in length at the last meeting. Are those minutes in like verbatim in the minute? Like, are no, they available no, to the no, public? No, Mrs. Deering. And in fact, it should not have been discussed at last meeting, but it was. And that's why I'm saying that I I believe that this kind of line of questioning is not fair to me as a person and as someone with 19 years of experience in public education, having to defend what I'm able to do and not able to do for our school district during my seventh year. So that, you know, it's just something that, that I stated last month. It is not a personal matter for you or anyone else. Uh, I just think that staff members should not be put on trial that way, whether it's what happened last month with other staff members too. So I, I just, I, I think that that's, that's the extent of, of how much I would discuss it. Um, I think you're taking this as a personal attack on you and but I mean every I'm, teacher I'm and every administrator has yeah. to have degrees and qualifications in order to deal with certain aspects of education special education teachers have to have a degree in special education so I'm asking you put that statement out there for the district and for the parents that you're going to be in charge of special education but there's no elaboration on that what does that mean I would, I, I would um, again, just state that I'm not going to debate or discuss this topic with anyone during the board meeting. Mrs. Deering, you So my, how do we discuss this if it's not you, during a board meeting? You have my email address and you have emailed me about other topics. There is no I have. why we couldn't discuss this in any other format. Uh, again, I, I, I will not engage in a debate or discussion about this topic or other similar topics. 
we, when I write you emails, I get very generic statements and replies. So that is why I'm asking this in the board meeting because I do not get responses either. I've asked you very few questions over email. They've been in regards to district topics that need clarification. And I always get a very standard generic vague reply. So if I sent you an email on this, would I still get a standard generic vague reply? Uh, I believe, like, as I said a few minutes ago, I, I will not discuss or debate this topic with you during the board meeting. So we can discuss this in private? I would be happy to meet with you or have a virtual meeting. And in fact, I offered that a few months ago when you had a number of questions. That was in regards to a different matter. And we did not set it up. Because that was in regards to a different matter, one in which you misunderstood well, my comments and so i'm just saying I, again i i don't wish to debate or discuss it in the board meeting that's not great i will send you an email to schedule a time to have a private call thank yeah. you jennifer joe is our superintendent he is basically in charge of everything and we could just leave it at that does anyone else from the public have any questions Reddit Gareth wants to know how to get on the Blackboard email list. Uh, Vera, we already addressed, already that, addressed that, please. For okay. Blackboard? I don't think. Yes, yeah. Was we did. Oh, yeah. sorry. All right. Um, from guest, will, I sh will we share his resume? No, we will not. Yeah, no. Although I'm very proud of my resume, to be quite honest with everyone here, I, I'm quite proud of it. But that's not an appropriate thing for us to do for any staff member, myself included. All right. Is there any other questions? Bill, can I make some comments? I apologize. Sure, Eric. Not a problem. Good. No worries. Um, to piggyback on a couple of things that you had said, Phil, and uh, kind of put in my two cents as a, a high school administrator, athletic director, you mentioned uh, you know potentially some of those cuts for the $115,000 budget cut that the state just recently kind of put on, not just the Lanco, but every school district. We're dealing with it as well and, and where I work. Um, I, I could tell you as one of the top three people in the middle school league that um, Delanco also participates in. I, I helped do the schedule and, and run that league. Eight middle schools have already pulled the plug completely on middle school athletics. I think the league likely is going to end up pulling the plug. Um, you know, it, not to mention high school athletics with the NJSI pushing things back to uh, the beginning of September, which is a full month back from the beginning of practices and then beginning of October. I think they're buying time until the, the districts uh, put in their uh, reopening plans, just like Joe was saying earlier. Um, plus, I'm hearing that Burlington County might be putting regulations on this on an entirety anyway. So that, that whole thing could kind of be a moot point and pulled um, to begin with, just kind of due to the COVID situation, you know. Um, and, and to even just to comment on the special ed funding and everything that, that everybody's kind of been going back on, uh, that, that special ed funding and tuition rates, they, they cost every district a significant amount of money. Um, you know, I, I agree. We definitely need to be contacting legislators, senators. But uh, on, a, on a separate point, as the chief school administrator, Joe, really, um, I don't think we should necessarily be judging like, oh, what's his qualification? What's this? We can all see on the agenda that, the, that some of this is costing us a significant amount of money. Some of this obviously are, are very, very uh, you know, legit. And these kids definitely need these services. Right. Um, but at the same time, maybe Joe is the chief school administrator, dare I say, is taking over special ed to kind of evaluate that and see what services we could potentially offer and reevaluate some of that money. Oh. So let's kind of start thinking outside the box here. And I'm kind of speaking to Joe Q public in a sense well, and saying that, yeah, it, Let's give this a chance to play out here a little bit. In, in actuality, we have been looking at other ways that we can save money. We were at about 10% of our budget, about a million dollars, and our budget is about $10 million. Now it's up to about 13, almost 14%. That's why it's having such a large effect on us. We have looked at different ways of how we could turn around and start bringing certain special education back into the district. But with some of these children and you know, if I was a parent of a child that needed special ed help, I'd want the very best. And so would every parent out there. I understand that. But, Absolutely. You know, one of the things that is, it's, it's totally killing the small districts. If you're a, you know, an Evesham school district or Mount Laurel or, you know, part of the Lenape, you know, I mean, you can turn around and have classes and it isn't a problem. 
in Delanco, because we're such a small district, it's taking away from the education of our other students, which is really bad. We are trying to get something in place for next year if we ever get back to normality. But, you know, it's like every time we try something or try to get something new going, something changes. Or, you know, we brought back the child study team from Riverside, you know, and tried to do it ourselves. And then the one lady that we had ended up leaving, you know, and we don't think- And Bill, getting... that, that saves us a good amount of money by not outsourcing the child study team to Riverside and having me oversee the process that the CST is taking uh, with our students. So, uh, you know, I, I understand there are questions. I understand that there are comments about this topic. And, you know, what I will say to the public is our, our local taxpayers have saved a tremendous amount of money by not having a separate special education administrator. That, I mean, that's important. That, that's a, that is very important for our budget and for our local taxpayers to not have a separate person that we're paying to oversee CST while I'm doing it. So again, and, and, you know, that's not just to defend me, but we made that decision for a number of reasons. And, and I think that that's uh, important for everyone here to consider. And Mr. Mossop, I appreciate what, what you have to say about it. Absolutely. Right. And that Joe, was I, I, Joe, I agree with what you were saying in that sense. And I, I just kind of want to say, you know, that, that obviously smaller K-8 districts, like Phil was mentioning, a lot of what you look for when you hire, not just chief school administrators, but any administrator is what other roles can they fill? And what other roles can they do? So that way you're really kind of helping that K-8 district because they don't have the same type of uh, resources that others do. So I, I understand that as an educator. So, um, you know, it, thank you to the board and everybody for, for looking into those possibilities. You're, you're very welcome, Eric. That's thank you, just Eric. some of the thank things. You. We share our school business administrator with Moorestown. It gets us, saves us half the cost, even though she's getting a lot of gray hairs from some of these meetings. <laughs> yeah. um, we also share our IT with yeah, you. Sorry about that, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have a lot of ways that we're trying to save money, but it's, it's just putting us more into a corner. Uh, I'll give you another example. We have two students in town who go to Katzenbach School for the Deaf. If you're deaf, that's the place to go because they teach you tremendous how to do a lot of things. That's something that I think the state should be picking up the whole cost on, but they're not. It comes back to us, including transportation. I think the state should take over transportation. We have buses. If you look at some of the buses going down the road or when they used to go down the road, you'd see five kids on one bus, six kids on another bus on a you know, 54 passenger bus. If the state took over the busing, it would save it tremendous. There has to be some way of, you know, every time we come up with something that's going to be a great idea and save us money, then the state comes by and they throw something else, another obstacle in front of us. It's, it's very infuriating because it just keeps, it's like a noose around our neck, which just keeps getting tighter. And it, it's, it's killing the small districts, you know, and I, I love the small districts. I think it's great that if you can have a chance for your child to go from kindergarten to high school in a district, or in this case, K through eight, and then go to Riverside or Cross or whichever way you want to go, I think it's great because the kids build some lifelong relationships, but it's just getting harder. And to the naysayers out there that think consolidation is the answer, consolidation really isn't going to save you a ton of money because we have a superintendent that does a tremendous amount of things in this district. If you turn around and I'll use a prime example of you know consolidation with Riverside, do you really think the superintendent in Riverside would pick up Delanco for the same amount of money? You can bet your bottom dollar she wouldn't. Nope. She would want significantly more. Plus, she would probably want an assistant, which would cost us probably you know double what we're paying now. And that superintendent would only do one thing: they would have to hire other people. To do it. So when people say you know consolidation is the answer, no, it isn't. The small districts work extremely well the way they are, but the state's got to stop pushing us into a corner. See, I got on my little rant again. I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions from the public? All right. I don't think we have anything else right now. Uh, we do have to go into executive session to discuss, I believe it's um, personal confidential legal. personal matters and confidential legal matters. Legal. It is approximately 819. I will say we're probably going to be back about 930. I would take a particular 
guess at. So if you, everybody wishes to hang around, we can come back at 9.30 or a little bit before, hopefully. Albert, Albert's going to keep this uh, public session open because we do have to come out of executive and then adjourn the meeting in public session. Okay. How do I do that in terms of like, um, I have to stop this Zoom meeting and then join Click on the other link. Yeah, yeah you leave it. The other link. Okay. You, you leave this one and join the other. Okay. okay. Now I need a motion to go into executive session. Cameron. Motion by Marissa. Second by Cameron. Second by Cameron. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'd like to take a quickie 10 minute break before we join back into the executive session. So that would put us at 830 folks, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, let's see how many participants we have back here. Okay. And okay, very good. I think we've got everybody. Okay, there's Lynn. Vince is almost here. All right, folks, I'd like to uh, Welcome everybody back to regular meeting again. Uh, is there anything else that needs to be discussed tonight? Well, then I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Stephen, second. Uh, Stephen, second. Marissa with the motion and Stephen with the second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, Aye. the motion carries to the, to the uh, Public. Every public out there, thank you very much for attending. Have a wonderful night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.